Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In my previous video in the Salesforce RCA series, we have seen how can we create a product catalog, add categories to it. We have seen how can we create subcategories related to a category. And then we explored how can we associate a product with that particular category or subcategory. Today we are going to learn about the product configuration and how a product can be configured in Salesforce RCA. So that's being divided into two parts. One is standalone product configuration and one is bundle. Right now we are going to explore how can we create a standalone product in Salesforce RCA. So here is the agenda. First of all, we are going to see architecture of Salesforce RCA. Then we are going to see what does product mean then classification of the product then we'll see the data model as well uh, the thing data model is how product can be configured or in which way product is configured and we'll see a use case and we'll configure the product in the system itself so here is the architecture of salesforce rca we have already seen that in our previous video and i'm just repeating uh, at the bottom of everything Salesforce platform is there. On top of that, Agent Force is there. So you can use Agent Force to manage your code to building stuff. Right. And over here, we are right now working, or we are right now doing our tutorial, which is on product catalog, pricing management, and configuring the product. Okay. So this is the architecture. Now, what does product mean? Products are item that can be added to code, right? Simple. Then any product or service that can be sold independently or as an add-on to another product is considered a product. A product can be offered either as a one-time recurring or consumption-based service. So this is what product means. So let's understand classification of the product. So Salesforce has classified products into three sections. The first one is standalone. What does that mean? A product that can be sold independently is referred to as a standalone product. Option. This is similar to standalone product, but there is some properties that we have to set, then it will become an option. But what does that option mean? So a product that cannot be sold on its own is known as option product. Typically, these option products are created to be sold alongside specific bundle product only. Okay. And now what is bundle? So a product that is formed by grouping together a set of option product is known as a bundle product. These option products are usually organized into product component groups. So there will be groups under which you can organize your products or option product. Right now we are going to see standalone only, but option and bundles will be covering into the next session. Now let's see the data model. I have mentioned it as a data model, but this is how the products will look like. So as you see, there's product which can be simple or bundle. Simple means standalone or bundle. A simple product can be static. That means it cannot be configured or it is not specified to be configured and it can be configurable as well. We'll see this. Okay, so don't get confused. Static and configurable standalone product. Then there is a bundle. Static bundle and configurable. Bundle. That means if the bundle is static, then you will not be able to configure it and change anything under it. If it is configurable, you are allowed to change a pre-configured bundle. Now, as you have seen over here, it shows like once a product is being standalone or it's being bundled, you cannot change it to vice versa. That means if the product is being defined as simple or standalone, you cannot make it bundle afterward. Vice versa for bundle. If it is bundled, then you cannot change it to standalone or simple product. This is a limitation for now. Now it's time for us to start creating the products. So here I have listed three products out of which the very first is CRM basic license. 
which has product code as CRM underscore basic. It belongs to service family. Asset creation is true for this. That means at the end of order activation, we'll be able to see an asset created for this particular product or quote line having this product. Configure during sell is false. That means we will not be able to configure this product while selling. Digital marketing audits is the second, second product. DG underscore audit is the code for it. It again belongs to service family. Asset creation is true for this. So we'll get an asset created and at the time of order activation. Configure during sell is true. That means we'll be able to configure the product while selling. Installation charges is again a product which belongs to service family and asset creation and configured during sale is set to false. That means an asset will not get created upon order activation for this particular line and configure during sale is false. That means we will not be able to configure the product while selling. So now let's review it. Now I have already created a couple of products like digital marketing and CRM license. I've already created, I've associated it with catalog as well. The only thing that right now it's spending is we are yet to create an installation fee. But let me show you that configure during sell is not allowed for the CRM basic license as we mentioned over here. And is assetizable is true. That means the asset will get created for it. Similarly, for digital marketing, configure during sell is allowed. So we'll be able to configure the product while selling. And asset creation is again true. Now let's see and let's create the new product. So I'm on home page. I'll go to product and let's say. I'll create an installation charge. So let me just create the installation charge. So over here, I have added product code, name, and description. There is a field called product SKU. Now, what's the difference between product code and product SKU? So consider we are having several third party products which we are not selling or which we, which is not manufactured by us, but those are manufactured by others and we are selling. So what happens is we purchase the product from the third party customer or third party. We sell it and we'll get our margin. So the third party company will have some SKU number for it. Right? So that SKU number we can record over here and over here we can provide our own product code. Product family, it belongs to service. We already talked about this like configure during sale is not allowed. Is active means we can mark this as active or inactive. Is assetizable is true, but I'll mark it as false. Product type is either bundle or none. So in our case, we want to configure it as standalone. So we'll make it none. Unit of measure will remain each. We are going to talk about this when we can when we take the scenario of bundle in the next session. Display URL is the URL of the image that is being shown in catalog. So we'll configure that as well. Availability date. That means the product is available on which date, starting which date. If you put it blank, then it will start appearing as soon as you activate it or and create the price book entry for it. End of life and discontinued date will will skip that right now and we'll have a separate session on it since I'm also exploring this stuff. Usage model type again will explore when we reach the usage scenarios. So I'll just save this. Now I'll have to provide the URL right so that I can see an image into catalog. So what I'll do is I'll come over here and I'll click on this upload image button. I'll click upload and let me see if I have any image. So I'll go to simple product and let's say I have this image. So I'll just add installation support and I'll just refresh it. So you see the display URL has came in. Now the thing is we have created the product, but we'll have to provide the price book entry for it. So I am putting 
a one time product selling model over here and don't worry we are going to cover this product selling model and price book entry when we have pricing related stuff so right now you will create a product selling model option record with one time and i'll add the one time model over here as as well so product selling model if you select let's say monthly over here and if i put price it would not allow me to save because i haven't created product selling model option so i created product selling option with uh, one time so that's where i'm adding the prices so let me put it as thousand i've already provided this data and now the thing that i'll have to do is i'll have to go to pricing setup and i have to click on this sync pricing data now what does it do so it will refresh the decision table which are required to be refreshed in order to see the products and pricing coming into catalog now the pricing tables or decision tables are refreshed so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to revenue life cycle management app and let me open up any particular quote so let me open up this quote it does have two lines so what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete those for now and let me just save this and we'll be ready with our browse catalog now so what i'll do is i'll click on browse catalog i'll go over here into product classification where i have already associated this product so now how come our installation charge will come over here so for that again as we did in our previous video what we have to do is we'll have to go to catalog go to category and then associate that product so product classification will go to standalone and we'll come over here and associate installation charges so we've added that and we are saving it now if i come over here and we'll click browse catalog i will be able to see the installation charges or installation support coming over here now we are not able to see one product which is crm basic license so let's see crm basic license which is having available date as 37 2025 so it will start appearing after this date or on and after this date yeah. and that's where it's not showing up now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna click on this configure button you remember we have marked this as configured during sale so wherever it is marked as not allowed we can see this blurred out and whenever it is available we can see a configure icon so there might be a possibility of this product having multiple attribute associated to it at that time we'll have to mark it as allowed during configure allow configuration during sale we'll come to this screen when we discuss bundle so i'm cancelling as of now and i'm just adding these two products to cart i'll just click this save code button which will take us to the code screen where i can see the code line item being added and now consider your document is generated it is presented to customer and customer has accepted the proposal once this acceptance there can be a possibility of creating an automation which will create an order but for now what i'm doing is i'm clicking up the create order button but before that let me just show you over here add asset which will show up all the assets related to this particular account email support service support plan keyboard monitor and the monitor is being shown over here now let me create an order so an order has been created you can see the same lines over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to activate order and now what happens when you activate the order upon activation the order line item will get converted into asset so i'll just click on mark status and you can see that an 
status is activated now the order is activated and for now I'm going to this quote and I'm just clicking on add asset you see digital marketing unit is now coming up but we didn't see installation charge because installation charge was marked as non assetizable let me just show you that installation charge is assetizable false that means an asset won't get created for it and we have seen that so that's it from my side today on standalone products thank you very much for watching the video please like and share the content and subscribe to my channel if you haven't thank you very much